Fatima says, yes, Bryce wants a kiss, and Angela is still as delusional as she has started the series. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Zatima video. And in this video, I am breaking down season one, episode number nine, the episode before the finale episode. And I am recording this. I should have recorded this before I watched the finale because I'm a little stressed right now, y'all, based on the finale. But I'm going to try to keep it cute and stay focused on what we have going on in episode number nine. Now, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm coming to you with news of team up content for the rest of the week, giving you new videos. What does the ending mean with the finale, as well as going back through some of the things that happened throughout the season, doing a little bit of character analysis and more, and you're not going to want to miss out on that. And I also am breaking down sisters and dropping new sisters videos every single day as we are now in the thick of season five. So hit the subscribe button. But this episode picks up right where we kind of left off with episode number eight with the proposal. And Fatima doesn't say yes right away. And I don't believe that she should have. Like, she asked some very valuable questions and she makes point to, like, they had just been fighting and now he's proposing. Part of me do feel like Zach was proposing as a part of his apology because men tend to do things like that. They love a good grand gesture to try to make everything okay and just clear the whole field. But when we really get down to his, like, speech and his words behind the actual proposal, it seems so genuine, so meaningful, so thoughtful like hella intentional so by the end of him speaking i was like go ahead and say yes for Tim. Well, yes y'all are moving too fast however this man really really love you you really really love him and at the end of the day y'all gonna be able to figure out whatever y'all need to figure out because the love is real now i am one of those people who also questions like is love enough because i don't believe that love by itself is enough however i do believe that they as people have enough other qualities to also bring to the relationship to support their love and make it for them to have a really healthy fighting chance at this relationship so at the start we definitely get to see Fatima say yes um and they have their moment and then they rush home to go ahead and get a little a little bit more up and close and personal and we love that for them um, I'm totally here for it. This episode was really lighthearted in my opinion. It gave a lot of like fun feel. It was super like flirty in moments and I laughed a lot, like probably more than I laughed the entire series. And I guess this is where they were pulling that this was actually a comedy from because when they first announced the Zatima spinoff and we didn't get that many details, a few months later they said, okay, it's going to be a 30 minute show. I said, okay, that's a little bit different from Sisters, but okay, it's a spinoff. It's just going to be a change of format. When they announced that it was going to be a comedy, I was like, oh, hell to the no, because you're going to go from this drama to a comedy. I'm not about to be kicking, yucking it up when we got real things to talk about. But this is where they actually are able to truly bring the comedy. We get, we've gotten it sprinkled throughout the series thus far but in this episode i cackle pretty much from start to finish now quite a few pivotal things happen in this episode as they're leaving the restaurant and driving home zach reveals how bryce actually asked him if he was bisexual which brings up the conversation of like what sexual orientation is bryce fatima already had her apprehensions about him which is also very weird she was given very much so flip floppy because sometimes she tells angela like oh yeah i like him he's cool he seems cool after this dinner and then the next minute she's like oh yeah i don't like him i don't like you hanging around him x y and z so she was still kicking that little like i don't like him energy and then once hearing like oh he asked about the sexual orientation of zach or if zach was bisexual those antennas shot up and she was really putting two and two together very very quickly but honestly i really kind of forgot about the car scene because as soon as we get home we get home to a bent over deja trying to fix her car and i'm just like ma'am it's like nine o'clock at night take your ass in the house but she gotta go to work she gotta go to a job and she's just like zach can you please 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 help me out i gotta make it to my next gig i gotta work tonight girl you working this two-piece suit that's the only thing that your ass is damn working because you're not working zach and fatima got her eyes on you okay she see right through you we see each other we see each other the scene with them is just comedic gold but also a little bit of uh drama realness 
And this is the first time that we're really seeing Deja go out of her way in front of Fatima to flirt with Zach, to put herself out there. And I'm just like, girl, you was damn bold because Fatima carries a strap. And you might not know this, but this purse is right here and it's always tucked. And Fatima is always ready. And she hasn't liked her from the very beginning. I just, I, I get the home recordness of it all and you on a mission, but also like, do you not love your life, honey? I promise you, Zach, not worth it. You already got the apartment. You already got the duplex. Don't get your ass set out and have a bullet hole in your behind to go right along with it now. Well, nobody wants that for you. You're too pretty. And that's the thing. Daisha is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Every single look that they have her in, I'm just like, well, I don't want Zach to look at her, but shit, I'm looking at her. And I'm straight. But again, Fatima calls her bluff, points out that she actually unplugged her battery herself, that she sees right through it, and she lets her know, I am not playing with you. You do not want to try this again, so keep it cute, keep it on mute, and let's not do too much. Because Lisa not, your ass can get handed to you on any good day of the week. I just want Deja to take heed, because Fatima is just not the one in order to. And we all know that, but she gonna learn, I guess. She gonna learn. Now, one of the things that I really liked now that I have watched the episodes, like both of these episodes, I like how they set up. Fatima has a very huge problem with Deja pushing up on Zach. However, it is not taken as seriously when it's Bryce potentially putting Zach in compromising positions and sexually advancing. And I want to make this note because I'm going to talk about it more in the finale breakdown. But you start to get the peaks of it in this episode, but you really don't even know that that's what it is until we arrive at the finale episode. After Fatima finished checking Deja, she comes in to let Zach know what was going on. And Zach is almost halfway back out the door to go and help this girl. I appreciate Zach trying to be a good landlord and trying to be friendly and nice and all that. But also, let's not be naive. Zach is giving all types of goofy ass naive and for him to have slept with as many women as he has slept with you know exactly what's going on and you 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 kind of know that you falling for the trap you know that you looking at her the way you look and you know that you looking at her and you see her seeing you like you are not actually helping either one of these women in this you're going to help Fatima get a charge and you're going to help Deja find her way to the grave I'm gonna need you to pull up and act like you got some sense Zach now it's not your fault that the girl pushing up on you but also let's not be blind let's not be blind now on the back end of this episode, we also get to see once Fatima gets to work that she checks with the receptionist about the test results, the DNA test results, which we don't get the actual results for in this episode. We get them in the finale. Just a moment of silence. But um, that's what's also happening on the back end. Fatima meets up with Angela. They were initially supposed to go to lunch, but then they somehow end up at Zach's job or at the office where Zach and Bryce are reviewing um, properties that they potentially want to want to buy because you know they have Rise Ventures and they are getting down to business. The way they pulled this logo together, this office together so quick, it's just like, well, damn. Okay, Bryce, you really love you some Zach because you be working burning the midnight oil and Zach just got to walk in and everything is done, done, and done for his ass. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, but this episode ends off with Zach actually swinging on Bryce because while they're actually going through properties, he makes an advance at him and tries to kiss him. Even though he acts like, again, are you bisexual? He like all of this stuff comes up again. Zach shows how uncomfortable he is. He actually says no. And then they try to put it all behind him. Zach's like, all right, it's gone. We letting it go. It's released. Cool, cool, cool. And then he is so close to him while he's holding the damn laptop that I guess he getting the vibes or the vapors or the whatever that Zach is putting off the pheromones. Whatever Zach is putting off, Bryce is picking it up. And that gives him a little bit of courage to be able to lean in and grab the back of Zach's neck for a kiss. And then he gets a nice old, not a one-two punch, because it's, it's just a little swift little, it's just a little jab to the jaw that sends him, sends him on the ground. And it was the most hilarious stuff I have seen, y'all. I was cackling, cackling watching it. It's not, not I'm, it's not nice, but you asked for that, Bryce. You don't just be running around here trying to kiss other men. <sighs> Consent is important for all parties period y'all i actually skipped a bunch my bad so before we even get to the end of the episode with zach knocking bryce out you got knocked up okay relax erica before we even get there we have a moment where we're in the car and 
Angela doesn't believe Fatima or is like, are you sure, girl? And she's leaning towards that got to be bisexual. The way that Angela believes anybody whose name begins with a B immediately, unequivocally, it's just, it's beyond me. You believe Belinda want to keep questioning Fatima. You believe Bryce want to keep questioning Fatima. Well, Fatima is the most solid one out the whole bunch. So, girl, I'm going to need you to reevaluate your mindset because it's giving goofy. And we're going to have to throw your ass out right along with Nathan while we going through the whole friendship eviction cycle. Because it's going to be a no for me. You either going to stop being delusional and come on with it, or you can stay in delusion and I'm going to have to keep it moving past you. Talking about delusion... Deja makes her point known from the night before because she's standing outside, I guess, waiting on Zach, smoking weed, nice and high, ready to let him know that if you didn't know last night when I had pulled these spark plugs out, this battery, and I was waiting and I was bent over in this green skirt and this matching halter and I was looking how I was looking, I want you. And I don't give a damn about your girlfriend because I want you. And we is cool they lot, Zaddy. We is the, like, I was just like, Deja, girl. I, we was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. So now if Fatima put them paws on you, you cannot blame or be mad at not a bit of it because you asked for it, honey. You out here, you pulling down your top so that your bikini can show. Then you got Nathan hiding on the side of the house because he, he about to pay for the cakes. Like, girl... You said you do nails and you do a little bit of dancing on the side to make some extra money. You ain't say you was a prostitute now. And no shame to the sex workers, but also, girl, get your sh together. Get it together. It needs to be tighter, honey. What you got going on is way too chaotic and it's going to get you hurt. Because again, Fatima don't play that. She just don't. Y'all, the, the most annoying thing that I saw in this whole entire episode was literally watching Nathan and Deja interact. Nathan is the weakest nigga I have ever seen. And I said it with my whole chest, argue with y'all's mamas. And Deja is a floozy, a cute one, but she damn, a, she's a trollop from way back. And the fact that, I mean, I guess all money is green, but she's like playing and, and catering to this little goofy ass nigga who's running around here cheating on his girlfriend. And maybe she don't know. I mean, the wife, maybe she don't know about her, but also it just, it just gave dumb and dumberer. And it's like, but you also want to smash his homeboy. Y'all sitting up here talking about Zach. It's like, what is actually happening here? Some good hot Tyler Perry soap opera drama. That's what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. And that's everything that went down in episode number nine, I believe. Deja lost her damn mind, deserved every bit of the ass whooping that Fatima's gonna have saved up for her. Nathan, it's almost time for you to exit stage left. Well, it's actually been time, but we've been trying to be nice. That finale, yeah, he gonna have to get up on out of there. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comment section down below. Did you laugh at all? Did you laugh completely and never stop laughing? Tell me all of that and more in the comment section down below. I'm your good sis, you let us talk TV with, and let's go ahead and get into this finale. Link the description box down below, cards above. Okay. Okay, good.